Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to take a look at this awesome Linux-based laptop. This is one of the nicest Linux laptops that I've ever seen. This laptop is made by Alpha and it's the Centurion Nano. Really lightweight, super powerful Linux-powered laptop. I also have their Ultra version, the Centurion Ultra, which is a 15.6 inch laptop that's a lot more powerful than the Nano, but it's a bit bigger and a little more expensive. They also offer the Lightbox, which is a very small desktop computer. It's either powered by the i5 or the i7, and it runs the Alpha OS, the Linux operating system that I'm gonna be showing you in just a little while. But in this video, I'm gonna be doing a quick review on the Nano. This is an all aluminum, very lightweight, super powerful Linux laptop. Now, I'm gonna be going over some of the specs real quick, and then we're gonna get into the operating system. But this thing is beautiful. All aluminum construction, 13.3 inch IPS display at three pounds. This thing is a beast. You can get it in an i5 version or the i7. Here I have the i7 7500U version. It comes equipped with the power jack, one USB 2.0 port, and an audio jack. We also have a little reset button here. On the other side, we have a full-size SD card slot, a USB Type-C port, HDMI, and a USB 3.0 port. It also comes equipped with an LED backlit keyboard, which is a good feature if you're sitting on the couch in the dark. You definitely want to see those keys. So I went ahead and pulled the bottom off. To my surprise, you are able to replace the hard drive, the battery, the Wi-Fi module, you can upgrade the RAM to 32 gigabytes, and it even has an M.2 SSD built in that's replaceable. The CPU is soldered to the board, but I did contact the manufacturer and they told me that in the future they do plan to release motherboards with upgraded CPUs, so you just have to slide them right into this unit. Really cool little feature with this book. Now I want to go over the specs of the laptop I have in front of me. There are a few configurations that you can configure on their website, but for me, the CPU is the i7-7500U. It's a dual core CPU with four threads up to 3.5 gigahertz. The model I have has 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. It is upgradable to 32. You can also get the eight gigabyte version. The GPU is the built-in Intel HD620 GPU. For storage, I have a 256 M.2 SSD and a one terabyte 2.5 inch mechanical hard drive. All of this is user replaceable, so you could upgrade this to a larger drive if you'd like to. As for the screen, 13.3 inch 1080p IPS display. The viewing angles are great. I can turn this thing literally all the way sideways and still see the screen. There's no glare at all. It also contains an upgradable Intel Wi-Fi module. It's 802.11bgn and AC. The operating system is obviously a Linux operating system and it's their alpha OS. It's based on Ubuntu. It's super user friendly. And if you're just starting out in Linux or you want to get started with Linux, this is an awesome option to start with. Now I want to get into the operating system. I'm going to run a benchmark. I'm going to test some video playback and I'm also going to test some Steam games and emulation. Let's go ahead and move over there now. All right, guys, so here's the operating system. This is alpha OS. It's based on Ubuntu. It's very user friendly. So if you're trying to transition from Windows to a Linux machine, this is one of the operating systems that you definitely want to choose. We have all the power of Ubuntu with the nice user interface here. There's a lot of useful apps pre-installed within Alpha OS. We can go up to applications here. It has a full office suite built in. So if you want to edit documents and things like that, you should have no trouble doing this. Next thing, there's also an app store, the App Center. You can always install through terminal using a PPA, but there are thousands of applications that you can download directly from the App Center. So if you're not into Linux just yet and you don't want to mess around with the terminal, this is a great option. We have games, education, development, audio, office, science and engineering system, literally thousands of apps to download and test out. Now, one of the main things this book has going for it right here is that i7-7500U paired with the 620 GPU. Very powerful little system. And to get seven hours of battery life out of something like this is pretty amazing. I wanna test some performance. I'm gonna go ahead and run a Geekbench. Now it's pretty simple to do. It's a little different from Windows or Android. I will need to open up a terminal. And I've already downloaded the Geekbench file that I need to run here. So I'll go into Downloads, Geekbench. I'm gonna run the X64 application. Press Enter. 
it started to run, all I gotta do is wait it out. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this and I'll get back with the score. It's gonna test the single core score and the multi-core score. So Geekbench 4 is done running. I'm just gonna copy this URL. I'll have to paste it into Firefox because that's the browser I'm using. And we'll get our scores here. Very nice. Single core, 4,253. Multi-core, 7,202. I'm actually blown away that this tiny machine can get these scores here. I know it's running an i7. It is a dual core i7 7500U with four threads. This is amazing performance out of such a thin laptop. I'm gonna scroll down here. Now, if you're interested in pausing the video to check out these scores here, you can do that. I know some people aren't gonna be interested, but if you are, you can just pause it and check it out. I'm really impressed with the CPU score here. Now it's time to move on to something else. A lot of people get their laptop, they wanna watch movies on it, they wanna play games, and that's what I'm gonna do here. First up, I'm gonna test Cody, and I have a 4K 30 FPS video called Big Buck Bunny. I wanna test it in Cody first to see if we get good playback. You could always use the built-in video player, but I installed Cody from the App Center, so I figured I'd give it a try in this video. So from here, I'll just go to videos, files. I'll add my video folder here. And I'll play Big Buck Bunny 4K 30 FPS MP4. This is a very high bit rate 4K video. And I've tested this on a lot of hardware. I can tell you right now, this is gonna run flawlessly because at the beginning, if you're using a small ARM chip or an older Celeron, you get a lot of stuttering. This is running beautifully. So I know this i7 CPU paired with the HD620 GPU will handle any kind of 720p video, any kind of 1080p video, and now I'm positive it'll play 4K. This video here is set at a higher bit rate than let's say you're streaming Netflix at 4K. So it's gonna handle those perfectly. Amazon Video, Netflix, I'm not sure if Hulu does 4K yet, but it'll definitely handle that. I'll go ahead and back out of here. Now I wanna test out some emulators. I have PSP using PPSSPP and Dolphin, which is GameCube. Let's go ahead and start with Dolphin. I'll just go ahead and launch Soul Calibur 2. The FPS is listed up in the top left hand corner. I'm using a wireless GameSir Bluetooth controller. You can find them on Amazon for really cheap. You can also use a PS3 controller or an Xbox One controller if you want. Choose Keylick real quick. Now it does take a lot of CPU and GPU to run this Dolphin emulator. It looks like it's handling it pretty well. Is there no other way? Battle one, fight. If you were to go with their Ultra model, they do have the NVIDIA 940 GPU built in along with the Intel HD 620, so it's gonna run this a lot better, but the Nano seems to be handling it pretty well. Next up, we'll test PSP emulation. 
Now the hardest game to run in any PSP emulator is God of War Chains of Olympus. Let's go ahead and see how this runs. I have the FPS listed in the top right hand corner. I'm going to fast forward this intro and we'll get into some gameplay. And here we are with some true PSP gameplay. Looks like it's handling it pretty well. Now the game should be running at 60. With a few optimizations turned on, I'm sure you could hit that 60. We're sitting at, you know, around 55 FPS, which is definitely playable. This is the hardest game to run within the PP SSPP emulator. So I can tell you right now that this laptop will handle pretty much every PSP game. There's one other one, it's uh, Midnight Club Dub Edition. But since we're running this at such a good frame rate, I'm sure it's gonna handle that also. With a few emulators out of the way, now I wanna test a Steam game. Since this is using the built-in Intel HD620 GPU, you're not gonna be able to play high-end games, but there are a ton of older Steam games that'll work perfectly. Half-Life, Portal, anything using the Source Engine should work perfectly on this machine. I'm gonna test Half-Life Episode 2. Oh, okay? So here's Half-Life Episode 2, We're running at 69, 70 FPS. It'll probably dip down if we get into an encounter, but it's definitely playable. hundred FPS. This is pretty good. I know this is an older game, but it's a really good game. And if you've never played it, you need to go ahead and play through all of them. This is episode two. You shouldn't have any trouble at all playing any of these Source Engine games. It's pretty amazing what these small, light laptops can do today. They do claim seven hours of battery life, but if you're playing games like Half-Life 2 and things like that, you're probably only gonna get three hours of battery life constantly playing that game. But for normal usage, you can definitely squeeze six hours, seven hours of battery life out of this. So that's it for this video, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick look at the Alpha Centurion Nano PC. This is the i7 version. They also offer an i5 version. If you're interested, I'm going to leave links down below. Stay tuned to the channel because I also have two other videos coming up. One on their light box, I have the i7, and the other on their Ultra version of this laptop. It's the Centurion Ultra, and I can tell you right now the performance is out of this world. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. And like always, thanks for watching.